What else mm-hmm. happened on the other side is there are so many dimensions. There are all these different dimensions and there's the music. There was music just everywhere for me and there always has been. Um, but in some of these other dimensions, it was like choirs. In other dimensions, it was like children singing. Good evening. Welcome to Earth to the Other Side. My name is John Glasspool, your host. I'm speaking with Althea Watson, who's had two NDEs, which she's going to share with us tonight. She is an intuitive and a healer, and I am so happy to have her with me. She's actually also uh, a moderator of one of my favorite Facebook groups, NDE oh. groups. And uh, so, so happy to have you on the show, Althea. Thank you so much for being here. Oh, thank you so much. It is such an honor and privilege to talk with you. I have been listening to your videos. I love your writing. You have brought so many people together with understanding and with the change of consciousness. I think that uh, this is such a great platform for people to get understanding on what we are as spirit and what just what we are. Well, thank you. Thank you. But the yeah. honor is all mine. And uh, oh. thank you very much for for your support uh, on the channel. Uh, I know you've been around the channel for quite a while and then I do appreciate all the support. It's been wonderful. For my generation, my first NDE was before I was seven years old. And um, I maybe like around five or something. I don't even know because I was so young. Mm-hmm. And um I can't talk about the circumstances because it's not a closed case and there are other people involved and there are some people that are still trying to heal from it. So that's all I can say. But what I can do is talk about the other side and that I went from just chaos and just absolute terror to this, through this tunnel it was like being on a roller coaster you know uh which i didn't know then because i was too young to have been on a roller coaster but in retrospect it works and then i went into this light and i was disoriented and then all i felt was love this incredibly deep spiritual love that's beyond the word magnificence there was just really no word for it but the only word is yujen y-u-g-e-n which is a japanese word and it is um the magnificence of the world being so breathtaking that there are no words (laughs) and it's kind of like that but it's it is so profound it's the kind of love i have never felt from a person uh, a dog, a cat, you know, uh, uh, anything um, except for the other side. And I realized what it is. We're not in our physical bodies. We, we, we become what we are, which is energy. And that energy is the frequency of love. And that's what every single person is. And what happens when we get in our physical bodies, we can't uh, grasp what it is outside of the physical. Um, And so, and and our mind can't comprehend it. Uh, You know, I've been meditating for years and I have these amazing meditations and this wisdom and all this joy and love and peace and when I come back to my body over a period of time it diminishes and I realize it's because it's my uh, my mind my body can't comprehend the the vastness the magnitude of what we really are it's mind-boggling to come back and not understand uh what happened to you in the first place that all of a sudden you so abruptly go to the other side. And it was like, I didn't see anyone. I saw this amazing, amazing light. It was like different shades of white and pale blues and 
yellows and and it just everything vibrated and i looked at myself and i thought i'm vibrating we we all like resonate and we all have a sound that we resonate with and everything everybody's different it's like you and i if we went over there now we'd be different colors and we'd be different sounds because we're that's the way it is and we carry with us the lives that we have lived i had trouble with this i was raised as a christian and from my two ndes reincarnation is real we don't die we transition and we focus on what we want to have understanding of and so we have this uh, akashic records i i'm not sure if i'm pronouncing that word right but uh yeah. that yeah. is the sum total of everything we've lived through and when we're on the other side that is in a frequency mm-hmm. from my experience it's like we become these threads of vibrating energy and one of those threads that we carry is what we have lived through and what we have come through what happened was i was in the midst of this and the fear that i had before i left my body was gone i was just in awe and just oh my god it just captivated by this love and this feeling so safe when i had come from such a situation of being so unsafe i spoke telepathically and what came to me as sound came to me as telepathic because i didn't see anyone it was all this energy and i was i was given a choice then if i wanted to return and i at first thought that it was the other way around my this that this happened my second time but um my dog was alive when i went over the first time but in spirit the second time so it i that's how i you know got the sequence together and they said you can stay here if you want because i have i didn't know how miserable i was but life was terribly scary and terribly frightening and uh i thought that this was what life was but evidently it isn't and i found out later that it's not but uh i was told if you want to stay you can if you go back you it's not going to be an easy life you're going to go through what you, kinds of things that you've already gone through and i didn't really understand all that was said to me but there was a moment where i had that attachment to my life on earth i said i miss my dog and i miss my mommy and like that like a shot like bam i was back in my body and so disoriented and what came back with me i don't know if i had this before was my telepathic ability it wasn't as sharp as it was on the other side but i could see spirit and i could hear them and i had moments where my dog and i could talk to each other and i know every little kid feels that they can talk to their their cat their dog their horse you know their fish whatever cuz we can there's an openness to us because we haven't lived with all these restrictions that we learn later i was back and very disoriented but i knew i came back knowing that we weren't what we were in our bodies and i didn't understand it and i happened to tell two kids that i hung out with friends you know that i went to see god and i i see dead people now and uh, i lost my friends <laughs> and my family was horrified at what i was saying they were like this is crazy this stuff you know this is just crazy 
So I lived feeling like I was crazy, except that when I was seven, I was on the Ouija board with my mother. And all of a sudden, she goes, what just happened? And I'm like, well, it got really dark and something came in and um, and you could feel and the lights went low. The lights kind of flickered and went low. And um, she said, we're going to put this away and we're never going to use it again. And you could feel this black, heavy mass start to retreat. Well, I didn't know my mother saw energy and felt it, but that was the beginning. When she knew that I did, that was the beginning of my training with her on how to track energy and uh, environmental energy and really like the strong energy that you feel like when you walk into a house and you're not comfortable or you walk into a house and you feel this love that there, that's imprinting. And that happens in environments. It happens on streets. It happens everywhere. If there's a real strong emotion. And at seven, I was feeling those things, which made it even more confusing because what I started to learn was people aren't always honest. You know, you would feel, I would feel something and then I would hear something else. And life was very confusing. And of course, school was <laughs> up for grabs for me. There were days where I remember all of a sudden I heard the teacher calling my name and calling my name. And then people were like making fun of me because I wasn't paying attention. But what happened to me, I would never give up for a second because what happened was Something triggered. I don't know if something got close to me or I don't know what, but all of a sudden I was in the light. I just was not in the classroom. And I came back with a teacher yelling at me, pay attention, with just this feeling of love. But it was very hard because I got like made fun of by people. But I just was like between these two worlds. And this is why I am just so grateful for you because I've been learning so much listening to your uh, interviews with people because at the, at the age I was at, there was nothing. There was absolutely, you know, nothing about this. And I ended up later on, well, I should probably go and talk about my second NDE and then I'll, I'll come back to like some more, some more trauma of the earth play. <laughs> but my second one was I had a hernia operation. And um, that's like an outpatient surgery, but I was in the hospital for like, you know, because, because I went out. It was a much more intense experience. I went through this tunnel. I have this memory of this wall and I saw two walls and one was like a black wall with white light and all this stuff was going on. Like I saw trucks, I saw, it was like, and this wall seemed to be miles and miles and miles long. And I heard, this is the world. And I was like, and it was like, on the other side, you can watch, it's like watching a movie. You can watch everything that's going on in the world all at once. I was like, I, whoa, okay. Um, and then I saw even more colors that I've never seen on the earth plane, more people as frequency. Um, and it was the most extraordinary experience to be back at that because it brought memory back because I had kind of repressed memory, except I had held on to, you are protected. You will be protected. It won't be easy. And they kind of gave me the indication then and one during the hernia operation was that sometimes we are a sacrifice. We have a collective that we incarnate with and we all have our own individual lessons because we're all in our own individual physical bodies. But then we have group lessons. So if you've ever had these moments where all of a sudden something just lifts off of your aura, off of the energy around your body or off of your back, or off of, I sometimes think that group consciousness has gotten to the point of something 
And so we go on in a lighter way because that energy we carried is lifted. That was possibly a burden. It was a, sometimes our lessons are not uncomfortable. Sometimes the truth is not uncomfortable. But when we get through it, we're free. We're freer energetically. We're lighter, I guess, is the only way I can say it. We make decisions to incarnate to the earth and we make uh, decisions on lessons that we want to have and who we'll be with and what we want to do. And the reason past life regression is important because we find out what happened to us. Because sometimes we don't stay on the path. Sometimes we don't. We go somewhere else. And there's a feeling of, well, wherever you are, that's where you're at. And it's all good. And you always need to be there. But in truth, sometimes we do come in with something and we do get diverted from it. And we don't accomplish what we want. And that's that's one thing they told me. It's like, You know, you have to make some decisions. You have to make some commitments. We have discernment. And I was like, well, I don't always hear my teachers and or my guides, as I call them. I don't always hear my guides. And they were like, well, when you're taking the test, the teachers are silent. There are times where we are tested. We are given the path in life to make decisions and to talk about what we want to do as we go forward. And those are our lessons. And we won't be, we won't hear, watch out, (laughs) go the other way, stop, go back. We won't hear those things because, you know, it's our own decisions that kind of maybe bypass some of those, those quiet voices of truth that we've ignored or that we hear and we just don't catch in. What else Mm -hmm. happened on the other side is there are so many dimensions. There are all these different dimensions and there's the music. There was music just everywhere for me, and there always has been. Um, but in some of these other dimensions, it was like choirs. In other dimensions, it was like children singing. And I mean, it just, and it goes on and on. And I heard uh, singing that were tones, harmonies, and it's all just, ah, oh. You know, and then there are others that are words. I I spent a lot of time listening to, I love drift music. So I I hung out in this place just, it was just ecstasy for me because it was all of these just incredible church, you know, songs that you would sing in church with the most amazing songs. And what I was told then, and I have found out that I really do believe it now, but I didn't, um, is that when we're on the earth plane, there are all these dimensions going on simultaneously while we're in the earth. And I've actually walked into some of those. I, I had this experience where I walked into a place. I was looking for a place to live. And it was this long, long, big, grassy place. And buildings were really far back. And I walked and I walked and all of a sudden, I wasn't around buildings. I was in like farmland and I saw two different Indian tribes. I saw settlers. I saw farmland being cultivated and I thought I'm going crazy. And they said, no, you're ready to have this experience because you had this with the music. So sometimes when we come back from these NDE experiences, our guides are with us. If, here's an interjection, if we call upon them. Now see, my my focus has always been God and understanding that love is the only important thing, which was very challenging when I had suffered such a rough time in my life, different times that were so seemed void of love, you know, and to hold on to that. But then to have these angels or guides with me all the time, because I always call upon them. When I was 
in this place of these two tribes and this, I mean, it was just a whole village. I was like walking down the street as people were passing me and there were Indians in like, you know, feathers and, you know, all these. Well, I got out of there and my guides were like, this was your, this was meant to happen because you have been asking to understand what consciousness is. And so you are going to get lessons that will surprise you. And I'm here to, to talk you through it. Well, I ended up telling someone about this going, oh man, I think I'm really crazy. Uh, and said about the Indian tribes and everything. Well, and I told this person where the land was, where the street was that I was looking for this apartment. And she came back to me and she said, you know what? There were two Indian tribes on that land and there were settlers and they were farmers and the Indians got killed off uh, through and the settlers were all fighting because they had what was called the cabbage wars. So I looked it up and, and what I saw is what was going on because I could also feel that there had been a lot of that while I was walking through this land that wasn't <laughs> where I was looking for an apartment. So there are, there are things that continue from a near-death experience if we stay with that plan of, I want to understand more. I want to know what love is. I want to know what consciousness is. I want that. And there are more and more people having near-death experiences or spiritually transformative experiences or out-of-body experiences. But we need to, to understand it. And so you're, I have learned so much from watching your interviews and reading your writing, which is so lovely. Um, I've learned so much. And so I just go keep going with this because now there are medical people working on near-death experiences of children. But for someone like me, what we ended up with is saying, oh, you're insane. Let's put you on medication and we'll put you in a hospital and you'll be fine. And it's like, what saved me was the day that I went to this clinic that I had been going to, to try to get help, was the man that I was seeing didn't show up. Another, a woman showed up and I was already nervous. My guide said, this is not where you need to be, but I didn't know what else to do. I didn't know where else to go. You know, I just didn't. And my friends were friends with the people I was with and the, the person I was living with. And so that wasn't going to work. I mean, you know, because you want to keep up this front of, oh, yeah, everything's great, you know. Um, so when I saw this woman, I said, you, your living room's white and you have big windows and you put a painting in your closet that was tan and black. It's a guy on a horse, something like that. And she just looked at me and she said, I'm going to give you an address and you're going to meet me there next week. And you're never coming back here because that clinic was connected to a hospital. And if they had said that I was schizophrenic and started me on these pills, I would have been put in that hospital and I wouldn't have been able to leave because these therapists would have said, oh no, she could be a threat to herself. She's schizophrenic. Well, I'm not, I'm not. So I left and met this woman and she had, she said, I want to show you something. And she brought up this painting of a guy on a horse that was kind of like beige and tan and black. And she said it was in my closet. So I let her know that I had an ability that I could be grounded and talk about. And I do feel that everyone is born with the ability to be clairvoyant, clear aud audience, clear sentient, to have all our five senses developed. But I think that what I have found is that the people and I do know some amazing psychics that came in and advice. You know, I know some people that at 12 years old were um, 
solving murder cases. I mean, I, you know, because this has been my life, this being intuitive. And so I have met all kinds of professional people. And so I have met people that came in that never had near death. But I would say the most near death experiences of people that I've talked to have come back with the intuition that stays with them and that they become spiritual because to all of a sudden know that we're not who we are in a physical body. Hallelujah. Because we're, we, we're just, we kind of fumble around through everything, but not nothing. Yeah. But, you know, the violence and poverty, the, you know, the people living in lack. I mean, there are all these things that are lessons for people. But if you get with this program of consciousness and saying, how do we do this? We start to learn that we do create a lot of our life. It's like, it's all our mind. We really create all of it. Don't we? <laughs> you know, see, I know you know. God is just love. And I what we get when we go over is a life review and that life review is about we go over we are shown what our choices are what we've said what our actions are and how it affected someone else and that's where we learn and that is where our soul just like opens like the lotus and so this life review is amazing. It you might feel horrible. Oh my God, I shortchanged that person working as a checker. Or, you know, all these mistakes we get, we have those moments. But it's just like it wasn't intentionally done to hurt anyone. And even when we have a situation where we want to hurt someone, we're shown why. And what that does for us is allow us to come back to our body and to come back to life with compassion, with understanding of someone else. But it's done with so much love because there is no death. There's no death. And I got the message that we really do not go before our time. I don't think we do. So when you were about six or so uh, after that first um, death experience, did you consider yourself or now looking back retro retrospectively, do you consider that you were uh, an empath at that age, since that age? Oh, uh, yeah. Because I could stand next to people and feel them. And I would give up who I was to make sure the person I was next to was going to be okay. But yeah, I have always been empathic. And, and I, after those near death, that early near death experience, I was always like looking for ghost stories. And I used to find magazines and, and that if they look like spirit, I would cut them out and keep them. So I would have something to relate to because so much of the guidance that I got as a child was just telepathic. It was you know, there was no body attached to it, even though I could see them at times, as there are also times where I would get guidance. And it was just telepathic. I didn't see anyone. Mm -hmm. I do have a, a viewer that was asking me about grieving. So what's your take on grieving? So my feeling is to know that your loved one you will see again, because uh, we do do that uh, on the other side. Um, uh, you can have them come to you if you ask for them to come to you in dreams. They can come to you in dreams. You might be able to sense or feel them, um, you know, because of the love that we have for them. That That is something that is very real. I also suggest that people join a grief and healing group to get support because our friends are our friends and we don't want to burden them with our grieving and our loss. And generally because if we've lost someone, our friends or our acquaintances have lost them also. And so we want to let them grieve too. Um, Samaritan counseling 
is a national organization that I think the world of. Samaritan Counseling offers free grief and healing courses. Yeah, well said, and and that's all good advice too. I agree with you. Thank you once again for being on. Thank you so much. This has been so much fun. It has been. I'm so glad I had the opportunity to speak with you. I know for a while. Did you did you wonder if we were ever going to be? Sometimes it was like, oh come on, let's do this. (laughs) It's always like that. Life gets crazy. So. But this was just so much fun. You are just, I just think the world of you and what you Thank are you. bringing to so many people. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. And uh, keep doing what you're doing too. You're amazing. Thank you. It's done. Mm-hmm.